Morning everyone, I hope everyone's well. Uh, we're currently in lockdown at the moment for COVID, so it's not a great time in Canberra, but it has meant that I've been reasonably busy with other things, so I haven't had much time for the cars, which uh, obviously is why the videos haven't been as forthcoming as usual, so I apologise for that, but uh, hopefully things will start to return to normal. Uh, what I'm going to do is, this is a bit of a supplementary video, we're going to run over the assembly of AN lines, different types of AN lines, my, why you might want to go with one or the other, uh, and we're also going to run over a fabrication process using some transparent polycarbonate sheeting that will give you a good idea of how you can template to make uh, sheet metal type brackets for, for your vehicle. I've used this for uh, my AccuSump, I'll be using it probably to fabricate the uh, coil brackets, I've used it for heat shielding, uh, water pump brackets, all these sorts of things. So it's quite a useful useful tool to have in your in your workshop and, and be able to put uh, uh, you know put to good use. Uh, I've most recently, I think I made a fire a fire extinguisher bracket for the, the front of the Megane. So uh, it's these types of things that that can be quite useful for. Uh, otherwise, leave your comments, criticisms, uh, any questions down below. As always, you can follow along on Instagram on uh, 105 Motorsport uh, if you want more up-to-date, uh, I guess, storylines on what's happening with the cars. Otherwise, hope everyone's well. Thanks for watching. Right, I thought I'd give you guys just a bit of a rundown on a process that I've used to, to great effect on a number of cars. And what it is, is just using some clear polycarbonate sheeting. This stuff's one mil thick, obviously it's got the white backing on it that you can peel off. And the reason that it's advantageous is because it pretty much folds and, and uh, has sort of the behavior of, of lightweight sheet metal. Uh, but the uh, advantage being is that you can cut it with scissors and it's sort of, I guess, that good medium point between actually holding it shape but also being uh, readily workable with just some standard scissors, for example, or some, some side cutters or whatever you, whatever you have lying around. Now, this uh, busman... Uh, sort of like if you like bust uh, fuse block here is something I'm using in my electrical system and I was going to originally try and use these these brackets that come with the kit uh, but it's not actually going to work and that's because uh, if we go over here to the car uh, what I'll be doing is replicating uh, this where the Raptor controller is on the other side I'll be doing a very similar thing uh, there it is over there uh, but on on this side and I don't know whether you can make it out here in the video <clears throat> reasonably well but this actually comes back on an angle like this uh, it's obviously got a bit of a funny relationship to the way this sidebar uh, is and also the way that this this backstay is here. Now for me to be able to actually get that and accurately map that uh, becomes very difficult but what I've been uh, what I've been able to do is just use that one mil polycarbonate sheet uh, and you can just cut it into place here and find exactly what you want and then it's just a matter of flattening it out and uh, we can see that we're going to have a hole there so that it actually sits flat uh, flush sorry that uh, that busman uh, fuse block there uh, if I can show you there, uh, that will actually sit quite flush there and sit reasonably low. Uh, the reason I had to do that rather than using the standard one is that the whole fuse block was going to sit a little bit too high. And what I wanted to do is just have that lowered down a little bit. I could have modified the original bracket, but this is going to be a slightly neater option and I'll have all the wiring coming in from underneath. Uh, I'll also be able to just attach like a couple of cable ties and cable tie uh, clips uh, just to the underside of this so that'll hold everything in place and make sure that there's no stress on anything. Uh, it also gives very good access from the front of the uh, car here through its access panel uh, to get to this stuff if I need to replace any of it. Then it's just a matter of this stuff just flattening it straight back out and if we go out here to uh, where I'm just going to cut my, my rubbish pile and, and where I tend to cut everything. Uh, we can see I've just flattened out that panel and I've marked all the drill holes, sorry about the fact that it's dirty, uh, where I'm going to have the cut out. And you can see it's a very funky shape because of the because of the way that those those backstays and, and all of the bracing in the chassis is. But it'll enable me to fit that up real, relatively easily and, and quite cleanly. So I'll just trim that now. Obviously clean the uh, bit of aluminium. I'll be bead blasting that anyway just so it, it has a really nice and durable finish. Uh, and I've got the fold line there, the cutout, and I've also marked where I'm going to put all the rivets into the chassis. So it's just a neat way of doing it. Uh, look, I, I've, I've found it's reasonably good uh, because even with the clear polycarbonate, if you have something and you're trying to actually size up uh, where to drill a hole so that you can, you know, obviously get a hole there and, and have it supported into, say, an engine block, something like that, uh, it, it's particularly useful in that regard. Just to illustrate the point with this uh, polycarbonate sheet about how it sort of bends like sheet metal, uh, I've just got a vice bender here, uh, which is used for just bending pretty much anything up to, I think, about 3 mil aluminium, you know, 1.8 mild steel. Uh, you could also just uh, clamp this, just to be mindful of clamping it both sides uh, to a workbench and actually just bending it down or even just doing it uh, gently with a, a soft face hammer. Um, look, there's... I've obviously got a pan brake bender that does up sort of 300 mil gauge as well, which I use all the time. But uh, it's still useful to have these things, and obviously you've got to you've got to work with the tools that you've got on hand. Uh, so I'll just show you, for example, if we want to just bend this along on this side, uh, you just need to line it up. 
and then you would bend this to whatever angle that you, you sort of need. Keep in mind it'll flex back a bit, right? So we'll go for a 90 degree bend here. And that'll give you a crease line. Obviously that's not very accurate because I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, and you can just get that into, you know, sort of your 90 degrees. Uh, then for example, with this bracket here, I needed a couple of mounting holes. So I can line this up in position for where I want to be. And uh, I can just mark those and just drill through them. Because it's transparent, you can see uh, the mounting point on the other side, which is otherwise pretty hard to, to gauge. So uh, that's how I've been going about it. Obviously, once you're ready to go, you just flatten it all back out as best you can. Uh, and then you can trace that onto your sheet, cut it, cut the mark lines, uh, mark where your drill holes are or where you might want to, you know, a, a center point for where, in this case, I was going to cut a, uh, a, a concession out here to be able to run some cabling and then use a dimple die. Uh, and that's pretty much all I use. Uh, I'll show you this particular one here uh, where it, it sort of goes. It's quite a complex shape. Shape You can see here it's got the, obviously the bracket mount there. Uh, and then also there's, there's sort of a, a double offset. And the idea behind that one is, if I can get this to line up here. Uh, we're virtually gonna have this one sit in here. Use the two pre-existing mounting points for the, the low pressure fuel pump. Uh, which are vibration isolated. Uh, I'd love to be able to get my hand out of the way there. Uh, and you can see, I mean, that's obviously not lining up very well, but where I actually wanted to mount that up there. And then that actually just needed to bend at the right, I bent that the wrong way now, um, would actually bend back and then enable the, the water pump just to have a bit of support off this plate. And this will also act as a heat shield uh, for the water pump and all of the fuel system down here. Uh, meaning that there's only really one line between the low pressure fuel pump there and the bottom of the tank that feeds it, uh, which I'll need to protect with some, some you know, some of that sort of uh, silicon sheathed uh, fiberglass uh, sort of, if you like, tubing that's going to go over that uh, that fuel line there just to protect it from the headers. So uh, look, I hope that sort of all makes sense, but uh, it's one technique that I've sort of liked using, uh, just one wheel polycarbonate sheet. I think it cost me maybe eighty or ninety dollars delivered, but I got like a ridiculous commercial amount i got like you know six sheets of 1200 by 600 polycarbonate sheet which will probably last me you know a year's worth of marking around uh, i'll also use a similar thing i'll probably do that for doing my coil brackets so maybe i'll run over that when i when i go through that i'm just going to make up the final bit of fuel hose that needs to bridge across the the two fuel rails in the ultima uh you can see here that this is uh, just a standard bit of braided hose. Uh, it's 200 series, which means it's basically one of the Teflon core. The way that you want to think about this is pretty much uh, 200 series is the higher pressure stuff and 100 series is the, the lower pressure, cheaper stuff. Uh, 200 series fittings run an olive in the joint, which is what I'm going to show you how to do here. Uh, pretty much the 100 series, the, the difference between it is, is that you just put the hose in, you just put the, what do you say, the screwing cap on to the hose to start with, and then just uh, push the fitting in and then screw it on. You just need to make sure that the hose doesn't pull out of the fitting when you're doing that, but otherwise it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I generally just use 200 series across the board for everything. Uh, there's not any real reason for that because 100 series is, is a cheaper version. Uh, I, I'd be happily, I'd be happy to use 100 series for stuff like, uh, you know, the oil cooler and that sort of thing. And, and in fact, I am actually using uh, a bit of 100 series for the for the oil accumulator in the Ultima. Um, what you want to use to cut your hose is a set of these. You can do it by taping it and doing it with an angle grinder and a thin cutoff wheel, uh, but you end up with a heap of shit inside the hose. Uh, another thing to think about when you are doing the hose, this is 100 series here, which is just a, a rubber hose effectively with a with a steel braid. Um, you can see how thick that is. Uh, equivalent AN10 uh, 200 series hose is that thick. So you can see here with the Teflon core, it is super, it's super space efficient, which does matter if you're trying to, to route things in certain instances. Uh, as I say, this stuff's completely fine, but it's just something else to consider. Uh, you can see here, I've got half a week's worth of wage in, in terms of bits. These things get very expensive. Uh, if you can, you can buy them off the internet and they tend to be a little bit cheaper. Or uh, if you if you have a good local supplier that'll look after you, uh, that's not a bad option any, either. Uh, anyhow, I'll uh, I'll show you how we put this one together. Uh, this one came from the, the sort of race works factory, I think like that with this thick ass tape on it. Uh, it is important to, to tape it when you do put the, when you do cut it, because uh, it will stop all the braid fraying, but this stuff's way too thick, so we won't be able to fit the hose end on, so we'll have to remove it. 
it. Um, otherwise, uh, look, it's, it's all pretty straightforward. I've got some aluminium spanners. You can just use standard spanners and uh, just basically wrap your fittings with just a bit of electrical tape uh, to protect them. Uh, it's nice to have some aluminium spanners if you can afford it. Uh, these jaws here are obviously designed to hold the fitting in place and make life a bit easier. You can do it without them. You can do it with a bit of angle in your, in your vice. And if you are making them on the car, of course, you just use uh, a couple of spanners. I don't have two sets of aluminium spanners, so uh, obviously I, uh, I use uh, one spanner with the wrap and use these where I can. Uh, so that's it. Anyhow, I'll show you how this one goes together. All right, so we can see here, if this will focus, the hose end. Uh, the reason that you obviously taped it is you can see how that braid's just sort of flared out there at the end. It makes it very difficult to get this cap to fit over the end. Uh, so what I'm going to try and do is just hold that in place and we'll see how successful that's going to be. Uh, you almost always end up with bits of uh, braid in your finger. I'm going to try and not... There you go. That's how you do it without stuffing it up. That's probably the first time that'll ever happen because it was on camera, so that's good. Uh, and then this olive, you just push down in, in between the braid and in the nylon, uh, Teflon, sorry. And you can see there, let me focus that. Uh, see how it's seated up against, there's actually a lip just on this little olive that it seats up against. That's pretty much all you need to do with that. Then uh, you can see here, here's the fitting. We just need to put this, basically feed this into here and then start screwing it together. A little bit of lubricant is especially important once you start getting to the bigger, bigger ones. Uh, I'm not going to make any jokes about that as much as I would think it amusing. Um, so we just want to put a bit of lube on that and just try and get it around all the edges there. Then that should fit in pretty much like that. Uh, as I say, if you've got some soft jaws, that's always nice. That's uh, not the end of the world. And then a lot of the time what you'll see is guys will actually put a mark uh, here just so they can see whether this braid's actually and their hose is pushing out in the process of fitting together We probably don't need to worry about that too much here uh, We can just get that started And then Get this one in here Again, like I say, this isn't a, like it's nice to have a vice, but it's really not necessary um, and then We just need to get this in position I like to just provide a little bit of support to the to the hose on the back side here. We'll just wind that in. There we have it. One final thing, uh, don't forget to, to basically clean these out with some uh, wax and grease remover. A spray can works really well, uh, just to get rid of any gunk that would be in these lines just from manufacturing. Uh, I believe these guys actually do tell you to do that even in their documentation. Uh, the other thing is, is that uh, when you are doing this, uh, try and line up the, the two faces here. Uh, it pisses me off when people have this like misaligned thing on their fittings. I don't know why the fuck you do it, uh, but it just looks shitty. Uh, so just one to be aware of. If you do have a small mark on there, like I have somehow managed to get there, um, just touch it up with a tiny little paint pen and then you'll you'll never know the difference. But uh, that's AN lines. Uh, you'll like, they look really great. They work really well. They're bloody expensive. So keep that in mind uh, and try and do do everything properly and do it once. There's some things that are always a little bit annoying when you when you order engines off other people. And for example, you can see this dipstick. I don't know what the fuck that is, but A, it's ugly, and B, it's just a pain in the ass fellas to use that all the time. So what I've had to do uh, to remedy that is to buy an Aeroflow aftermarket item. It's about a hundred bucks. Uh, you can see here it's basically just some braided line with uh, with a mount and a and a billet top there. It's quite nice. Um, as I say, it was about a hundred dollars, but uh, what you want to do is anytime you purchase these, you've got to be very careful with aftermarket stuff because you blindly think that, it, you know, if it says that it's for an LS3 or whatever you've got, uh, that it would fit. But you need to make sure that the distance between where it's going to seat here in the in the engine block and actually the bottom of the dipstick is going to be accurate. And just check where the measurement lines are. I've seen, a, I've heard of a whole heap of people and I've seen a lot of guys where they go and get aftermarket dipsticks, they're the wrong length and you end up with the wrong wrong amount of engine oil in your, in your car. So uh, if we pull this one out, reasonably carefully of course i put oil everywhere uh, we can see that it seats there and uh, you're not looking at the exact same length so that's a bit interesting but the fill line on this other on the actual standard one is actually i don't know whether you can see this on the video but it's basically between here and here so what we need to compare is actually the fill points 
Uh, and we can see here that the top of that is virtually the bottom of the fill thing. So I need to just make a mental note about that and fill that accordingly, or otherwise you'll end up with the wrong amount of engine oil in your engine. So uh, look, case in point, this is specifically, I'll put the part number up for an LS engine. This one here is the GM equivalent, and you can see that they're actually not completely identical. And there's that 100 series line there, which is going to run between the uh, remote filter mount and also my AccuSump there. It was pretty hard to, to be able to measure that in the car. Obviously, uh, making the lines, uh, particularly this one here that runs back up from the sump, it's already installed, so I'm going to have to fit this off uh, whilst everything's in the car, which would be a bit of a challenge because you've got to use two spanners rather than having the, the advent of a vice. But uh, that's all working out reasonably well. Uh, there's, not, there's not too much more... I think in the way of hoses to fit off which is quite nice but uh, all starting to come together and look look reasonably neat here so and we can see there's a little bit of there are like a lot of little things that you sort of forget that need to be done but the exhausts are in and and we're making some inroads which is which is quite nice so i i can't wait uh, to fire this thing up the good thing is well, i'll be able to test all the fuel system and the coolant system uh because of the electric water pump i'll be able to pressurize all that sort of stuff i mean obviously i won't be able to get its temperature but i'll be able to get it flowing its its uh, fluid uh before i even fire this thing up so i'll be able to deal with all those leaks ahead of time and then that should really mean that uh when we do fire this thing up the only thing i really need to pay attention to is uh uh, air leaks uh, for any of this this ITB system. Um, I can use just a bit of smoke or something like that to make sure that there's no leakage from that. And otherwise, it'll just be uh, these oil lines that I need to pay particular attention to. So before I do that, I'll remove all the floor pan and make sure I've got adequate access to be able to nip those up if I need to and also um, get a good look to inspect them. So very exciting times. Where's the cat? Where's the cat? Get the cat. Cat.